Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome into the Pro Football Chase Podcast. It's Isaac Signs with you. And joining me for an interview today is Charlotte defensive end Alex Highsmith. Highsmith repeated first team All Conference USA notice and was named a third team All American by the Associated Press as a senior. He finished his four year college career with 185 tackles, 47 for loss, 21 sacks, four force fumbles, and five pass defenses. Alex, thanks for joining me. How are you doing? Of course, thank you for having me. Out here. I'm doing great. You know, just uh, doing whatever I can to stay active and stay ready during this quarantine. So it's I'm doing good. Let's talk a little bit about your journey to Charlotte, Alex. You were not highly recruited coming out of Wilmington, North Carolina, prompting you to walk on to the program, which is a bizarre story because you are now less than a couple of weeks away from being an NFL player. What led you to Charlotte in the first place? Yeah, I think my um my story is kind of unique, you know, how I got to Charlotte. And, uh, I think it's a you know a pretty cool story. So, um, one race here in Wilmington, North Carolina, and like you said, I didn't have many offers coming out of high school. You know, the <clears throat> only teams you know that were, that were truly looking at me were um were Furman and Davidson. You know, both of those being FCS uh, Division One schools, and Furman offered me a partial scholarship, and but well, still would have you know been having to pay like almost thirty thousand dollars to go there for out state tuition. The Davidson they don't they don't offer like athletic scholarships, so you know I had had a good GPA in high school, just my test scores um, wasn't able to get in, so. Um, I knew like I, re- I really like both those schools, but you know I remember visiting Charlotte for the first time and I just kind of fell in love with it. You know, before all the football stuff, just the campus in general and just the whole city, like I love it. And so, um, really, the first time I visited UNC Charlotte was a uh, was right after my junior day at Davidson, um, and right before my uh, at the end of my junior year. And I just you know like I said, fell in love with it. And so I played at Ashley High School in Wilmington, North Carolina, and our rival high school was Hoggard High School. And so. Their head coach, his name was Scott Braswell, and at the time, his son Scotty Braswell, Scotty Braswell Jr. was coaching, was a graduate assistant at Charlotte at the time. So with with Coach Lambert and their staff, and so um, what I did was, you know, I reached out to Coach Coach Braswell, said, "Hey, is there any way you know, I can pass my film to your son? He can pass it to the, the staff at Charlotte." And so you know, that's, that's that's what happened. You know, I kind of. Um, gave my film. They, they invited me up, you know, uh, for the spring game and stuff like that. So kind of a couple unofficial visits, went to see a practice and see the spring game. And so, and then, you know, I found out that I was going to be, I didn't, just didn't know, I think I was, didn't know I was going to be on the team. You know, I had a really good shot and a really good, um, you know, and I really thought, you know, I had a good shot to be on the team. But I really found out um, in June when I got an email um, saying that my, uh, my, my room had been switched. So my dorm had been switched. So originally I was going to, um, I was gonna room with uh, a few of my uh, good friends, a few of my best friends from high school, and uh, but then it got changed to football guys, and that's kind of when I found out um, I was gonna be on the team. And I didn't, unfortunately, I didn't make the first 105 um, to go to camp, so I just came, I walked on the first day of school, and just kind of made the most of my opportunity and never looked back. So that's how I got to Charlotte. That's an incredible journey, Alex, and one that I have much respect for that you walked on and you really earned everything that you were given there at Charlotte. And I saw that you did redshirt your freshman season. You logged some playing time in 2016. You had 17 tackles, a sack in 12 games. And then you received a scholarship before the 2017 season and made an impact on the field with 33 stops, five for loss, two sacks. Can you talk about the significance of earning a scholarship after really just two seasons in the program? You know, I think it's um, it was just a day I'll never forget. You know, it was just honoring. It was just you know humbling. You know, see that all my hard work had finally paid off. I still remember the day where Coach Lambert called me into his office and. Um, I got the news and I just looked at the sky and said, thank you, Lord. And just know that all my hard work had paid off, you know, just I was so excited. But, you know, that wasn't the end all be all. That was just a springboard and you know, just helped me to do bigger and better things while I was there. And so um, I still remember, you know, I told all my boys, told all my teammates, um, like right, right, right after it happened. And um, they, they were all just so happy for me. Then I was going home that day because, you know, I didn't know whether I was going to be coming back for a summer or not because, uh, I didn't want my parents to have to pay for summer school during that time. So um, I, I, I waited to tell my family until when I got home and just um, seeing their, the joy in their faces uh, when I earned a scholarship was just so awesome. It's truly a day I'll never forget. But and kind of like I said, you know, it wasn't the end all be all, but it's just definitely, you know, awesome to see, um, you know, that my hard work had paid off during that time. 
Alex, you made a huge leap from your junior to your senior season. In 2018, you had 60 tackles, three sacks, and then in 2019, you burst onto the scene with career highs across the board, 75 total tackles, 43 solo, 21 and a half tackles for loss, which ranked fifth in the nation, 14 sacks, which ranked fourth in the nation. What sparked your breakout campaign? Mm, I think, you know, this past year, you know, we got a whole new coach and staff. Um, you know, Coach Healy came over from uh, – from Austin P this past year and um really what changed for me was uh the hiring of uh, coach Marcus West um you know he came from Minnesota the year before and he was at Austin P in Chattanooga with coach Hill before that so they already had a great relationship um so I remember um just you know I remember looking him up and, and they um they were telling me they were going to hire him and I looked him up on Twitter because you know our coaches have a Twitter and uh, he, I saw his Twitter bio. He said, "I tame pass rushers." He said, "Pass rush specialist." So I got super excited. And I remember in Coach Shilley's uh, uh, welcome interview, welcome press conference when he first got hired. Uh, he said, "We're going to rush the passer, and we're going to win with the four up front." So I was just excited to be able to have that freedom, you know, because I played a um, a four eye really my 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 junior year, and so I didn't have that freedom uh, really on the edge like I did this past year. But, you know, really not just the scheme that we played, but just also all the things that Coach West taught me. You know, he taught me so many things about pass rush, so many details, so many new moves. And, um, you know, taught me just, – just, we kind of watched film the year before. and um, We watched film the year before, and he just pointed out little things in my game that need to be fixed, like my get-off. Like I was, I was explosive, but I just need to get more length in my get-off. And then he told me – I remember the first couple meetings he had, he said I couldn't bend at all. And I kind of, kind of took that to heart. And so – I ran the hoop drill like almost every day during the summer and it ended up being one of my best traits. So I still remember him telling me, you know, I want I want you to be the best player to, to walk out of here, you know, come to the end of this year. So uh, he definitely, you know, I can definitely attribute, you know, a lot of my success, a lot of my success this past year to him. How have you embraced the underdog mantra throughout your entire life, Alex? And who are some people in your life that have been steady forces through all the ups and downs? Um, you know, I feel like I've always had the underdog, uh, you know, mentality, the underdog role. I feel like I've embraced it well, you know, me being a walk on, you know, that's the ultimate underdog, um, you know, underdog situation. So just me coming in, you know, I've always had the extra chip on my shoulder, just outwork everybody, just be the best that I can be and do whatever I can, you know, to help, help the team win. Um, you know, I always like to say, I'll, I'll, I have the, I have this walk on mentality that I'll always carry with me, you know, for the rest of my life and everything I do. So, like, you know, it doesn't matter where I get drafted, whether it's, you know, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, undrafted, you know, no matter where I get drafted, you know, I know I'm going to have that same chip on my shoulder, have that same walking mentality, um, you know, that I've always had. And they're really, you know, people that I've, you know, my support system, you know, that have always been there for me throughout, you know, in the recent, recent years and a lot of my life, you know, of course, my parents have been there for me my whole life. I'm just, you know, thankful for them and just thankful for the support that they have and the unconditional love they have for me. They literally, they, they came to every single game this past year and came to almost every other game, you know, when I wasn't playing. So just, you know, their support for me is just unmatched. I'm just so thankful for them. And you know, also my best friend, Nick, as well. You know, we um, grew up with him, uh, played, played Pop Warner with him. We got really close before we went to Charlotte. You know, he's just um, um, not just, you know, a brother. Um on the field as well because we played we played football um he played football his freshman year we're not just you know brothers when it comes to sports you know we're also brothers off the field you know because we we we're both christians you know we're faith is most faith for for both of us faith is the most important things in our lives so we just really have a connection you know that um, a lot of people don't just thankful for him and just thankful for my parents as well Amen, brother. Yeah, it is important to have a spiritual base, and so that's awesome that you have that structure. We share in that same vision. Now, let's talk a little bit about the 2020 East-West Shrine game, which is one of the college all-star games, and Leon Lett served as your defensive coordinator, two-time Pro Bowler, three-time Super Bowl champ. What did you learn from him throughout the week? It was good. You know, it was, it was the whole week was awesome, you know, getting that NFL exposure and just being around all those NFL coaches and scouts. So it was really cool to be under them. And just I, I got kind of excited, you know, or really excited when I saw that Leon Lett was going to be our um, defensive line – or not just defensive line coach, but our defensive coordinator because I know the, that he's a defensive line coach at the Cowboys. And I watched guys like Demarcus Lawrence and Robert Quinn taking moves from them. But, you know, just um, learned a lot from them. I remember there's – as they like practice two or something like that, you know, we were watching um, extra film, you know, as D as D line group, and he came in there and watching it with us. And um, one of the moves that Demarcus Lawrence and Robert Quinn both use uh, is, is a cross chop, and so he uh, that's a move I use too. And you know, he he kind of noticed that because that's what um, his guys use, and so he just kind of pointed me out, you know, ways that I can be better, you know, um, 
and it's going to be better at flipping my hips and stuff like that. And so I yeah, definitely got a lot of knowledge from him. So it was a great week for sure. And you know, I felt like I went in there and did the best, that, did the best that I could. Another event that was on your agenda, you were a 2020 NFL Combine participant and were named to the NFL All-Combine team as an edge rusher, posting the fourth best 40 time among defense alignment at 4.7 seconds, and then your 33-inch vertical was also toward the top percentile for your position. How much attention did you garner from that performance? Um, You know, it was just... It was an awesome, you know, experience. You know, I kind of went in there with my underdog mentality as well. You know, there's, you know, going in there, you know, a lot of guys um, not looked at as highly, you know, because I'm from a smaller school, you know, being around a, a lot of power five guys, you know, some of the best guys in the country. So I just went in there, you know, with a chip on my shoulder, you know, I felt like a, I had an edge, especially during the workouts, you know, that a lot of people didn't have, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't there to play around. I wasn't there to, um, you know, mess around, you know, because I know that you know, this going to that week, you know, that's the biggest job interview of my life. So and it's a long one, too. So just really staying focused and staying committed the whole time just really what helped me to just uh, be able to um do 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 how I did on the field and just also crush the interview process as well. So I'm just, you know, thankful for, you know, I just, you know, hope that um it helped me uh, rise my stock, you know, in the draft process. So, like I said, an unbelievable experience and I'm just thankful for the NFL for allowing me to be there. At 6'3", 248 pounds, what are your strengths as an edge rusher? What makes you stand out from other prospects? I think, you know, my motor and my effort, you know, that goes along with just my mentality that I have and everything I do. You know, I just have a knack and an extra effort to get to the ball and just, you know, make as many plays, you know. So I feel like, you know, I, I was productive the past couple of years because of my effort. You know, you can't you can't be productive. You can't be a good defensive player without making uh, – without having good motor and effort. So it's just, that's just really where it starts for me, you know, just my array of pass rush moves that I have in the pass rush game. You know, I'm not some guy that, you know, can only do one one or two moves. You know, I have a variety of moves. I have a couple, you know, that I love to do that I feel like, you know, are my best ones. But, you know, in times of need, you know, I feel like I can pull out other ones as well. So I just say, you know, I'm, and I'm also very versatile as well. You know, a lot of teams have been talking to me, you know, three, four teams are going to have me play an outside backer. So I just um, feel like I'm very versatile. And I feel like I showed that at the combine as well. I know you mentioned Robert Quinn, Demarcus Lawrence has a couple of edge rushers that you've studied. Are there any other NFL edge rushers that you have looked at their tape to enhance your knowledge of the position? Yeah, I've, I've watched guys like uh, Von Miller, Cleo Mack, Neil Hunter. Um, a couple and Yannick and Gakwe as well. Watching guys like those too, because they all, um, they all just you know some of the best guys in the league. So I just love watching them and seeing how they they do what they do. Who have you been training with the last couple of weeks, and what does your training regimen look like? So this past couple of weeks, I've been I've been home in Wilmington. So I've been home in Wilmington for almost a month now. Um, this this Thursday to be a month. So I've been doing like a bunch of different trainings. So I've been doing uh, cross training with uh, Derek Brunson. So he's a UFC middleweight fighter, and he's in the middleweight division right now. He's number eight in the world right now. So he's born and raised in Wilmington as well. And how I know him is because my dad taught taught him when he was in high school. So it's kind of a cool connection they have there. So I've been doing cross training with him, you know, working on my uh, cardio because it's great cardio with that stuff and just working on my hands and having fast and violent hands with boxing and stuff like that with him. And also been training with uh, Terrence Williams as well. Terrence uh, was uh, born and raised here in Wilmington, North Carolina, and played running back at um University of Wake Forest. And so – um, yeah, I've been doing a bunch of agility and footwork training with him, you know, just working on uh, you know, working on those things uh, to help me just be, be more fluid um, as a linebacker as well and just ha- help me with my footwork. And then, you know, I've had my, my strength coaches uh, bless me, you know, be able to have a weight room. You know, he's opened up his weight room for me. And so i um, been able to have a place to live. So I've been staying active um, since I've been home. And I'm just glad, you know, because like I said, I've also been able to spend a lot of time with my family as well. Alex, I know you've been in high demand with a lot of NFL Zoom meetings, but as we inch closer to the NFL draft, what is your final message to NFL GMs about your character, your dedication, and your commitment to the sport of football? You know, I think that's what separates me from other guys in this draft. You know, um, I'm a guy who's who's built on you know, my character and my faith. You know, my faith is what matters most in my life, and you know that's the reason why I am today. You know, not only is my work ethic gotten to where I am, but it's God's grace in my life. You know, I feel like I can, you know, just bring to a locker room what other guys can't. I mean, I feel like I'm a culture builder as well. You know, a guy who who will bring positivity, energy, enthusiasm, and passion to to everything I do. So you know, no matter how the season is going, or no matter you know what's going on inside the locker room or what's going on um, during the season, I'm still going to be the same guy and just bring the same energy, enthusiasm, and uh, passion every single day. So just um, a guy of high character. You know, just a guy who's going to do whatever he can, whether it's special teams or defense to help team win the championship. 
And lastly, Alex, because I have you on and you were a walk-on and you're about to be in the NFL, a lot of players listen to this podcast, and we know not everybody gets a scholarship coming out of high school. What is a nice, uplifting word for those players to continue pursuing their goals despite not getting that offer that they desire? Just, you know, tell them that their time is coming, you know, just to to do whatever they can, just to keep working and keep grinding, uh, knowing that, you know, if they have that work ethic, you know, then they can do it, do whatever they want to do. You know, that's something for me, you know, uh, being a walk on, just something that, that that's proud of me, just really being the being the first guy in the building, being the last guy to leave, you know, showing up early to the meetings and just, you know, keeping your head down and just really um, not worrying about all the outside distractions, just really focusing on what you got to focus on and really just um do whatever you can to uh, be the best you can be. So just really, for me, it's just trusting the process. You know, a lot of guys try to look at your end result, um, you know, and hey, you know, the scholarship is the end result, but really you got to take it day by day and week by week and just do the do the, do the the little things daily and be disciplined with everything you do daily and then the results will um, handle themselves. Well, Alex, I appreciate you joining the podcast again, man. I admire your character on and off the field, your spiritual base. I think that's awesome. Your witness out in the community, which is so important. So best of luck to you, brother, as you continue your preparations for the upcoming NFL draft. Yes, sir. I appreciate it, Isaac. Thank you for having me on. All right. Blessings, man. Yeah, you too.